Hello, I'm abx 2 cat and welcome back to another second channel video. Today I have some more Geography of Toy Cat for you all. It's everyone from the second channel series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today I'm going to talk about one of the parts of the world that fascinated me more and more as I learned about it because it happened the very first time I, you know, went to like another country as an adult when I realized that, oh, there are some parts of the world that you can't refer to as a different name, not just because they are, you know, like, uh, you know, if you refer to Sweden as Kazakhstan, that's kind of silly, right? Like, ah, uh, that's wrong. It's not just that you can't refer to certain countries as other countries because they're wrong. There are lots of parts of the world where there are deep political visions, there are deep war divisions in some cases, terror divisions, etc. And if you refer to a country as the wrong status or as the wrong country name, you're often bringing that up and implying a side of it, which is a very bad idea in lots of cases. And with today's video, I figured I'd explain some of these bad ideas just in case you want to avoid, you know, calling certain countries the wrong name. Or if you want to go the opposite way and offend people, then here's how you can do that, but just with a country name or status. So yeah, with that said, let's get straight into it and let's start by talking about, uh, by the way, this is mostly going to be European centric because I'm from Europe. I'm sorry, that's just my own experiences on this, but I'll go through a few other ones too. But yeah, let's uh, start the, uh, the first one, the one I first learned about because maybe five or six years ago now, I don't know where it was in my timeline, uh, I actually went uh, to Northern Ireland for the first time because that's where my dad lives and my stepmother, I think it would be, uh, is a strong loyalist of Northern Ireland. So that means that whenever I, whenever I mentioned I was going to Ireland, she'd be like, you're going to Northern Ireland, son, like, you know, like do that sort of stuff and like very, you know, vehemently say, yep, this is Northern Ireland, very separate to Southern Ireland, but that's actually like kind of a half and half thing in Northern Ireland. Half the population, or a little more than half, are happy of it being a part of the UK and being Northern Ireland, and half the population just insists the entire island is Ireland. This is also true south of the border, where if you call them Southern Ireland, that's offensive to everyone in Ireland, like even though it is the Southern Ireland in comparison to Northern Ireland, because Ireland has a claim to the whole island. Again, I could go through the whole story, but I feel like I'm going to offend people even with that. But the whole thing you need to keep in mind, uh, keep in mind here is that the UK and Ireland have a kind of painful relationship, and as part of that, Ireland kind of accepts that Northern Ireland is part of the UK, unlike the rest of Ireland, uh, but that means that one, if you call uh, the rest of Ireland Southern Ireland, they get a little bit offended. Two, if you call half of Northern Irish people Irish, they get offended. And three, if you call any of them just English or, you know, UK citizens or whatever, uh, then you're gonna get some people offended. So yeah, with that, just, just keep that in mind. And also actually, you know what, I'm gonna spend way too long talking about this one story, you know, this one uh, situation, but this happened two weeks ago. So here's a perfect case to bring it up. So I was in a, uh, a bar in Amsterdam for my brother's birthday, and uh, I just finished going to the bathroom and some guy was standing outside and he's like, I can tell from the way you, you know, urinating that you're, you know, you're English or something. And I'm like, you're not wrong, but that's very creepy. And I was like, oh, so where are you from then? And he's like, I'm from Ireland. So I was like, oh, you near the Dublin area? Because Dublin's the biggest city. And he's like, no, I'm from Belfast. And I should have realized what was going on at that point, but I didn't. And then he had this like giant conversation with me about how like, oh yeah, well, because you're English, you don't care about us at all. And you you, know, you hate us all like, because we're from Northern Ireland. And like, he went through this whole like horror story. And he's like, oh yeah. And the IRA was just right from this time, this time, this time. And then like, even though he was kind of friendly about it, we had a good debate. At the end of it, he's like, oh, let me say goodbye. And he hugged me like painfully so watch out for people uh, from Northern Ireland if they say they believe in the IRA and they say that you know you don't like them all because they might hug you a little too hard there's there's your pro tip with toy cats so <laughs> again way too long one story but let's move on actually to the Netherlands which is where Amsterdam is because Amsterdam is in Holland in the Netherlands there is a North Holland and a South Holland if I'm not mistaken in the Netherlands but they are only two of the provinces of the country and if you call all the, and uh, also the people from those provinces will call the whole country off the Netherlands Holland and in fact um a guy I knew at school was, you know, from the Netherlands, and he insisted it was just, it was Holland. So, you know, you learn that the Netherlands is Holland, but that's not true at all. The country name is the Netherlands, or Netherlands, it's not the Netherlands in some cases, but the country name is Netherlands. If you call it Holland, you're going to offend a lot of people outside of there, and if you call it the Netherlands, you're not going to offend people from Holland, but they'll insist on calling it that way. So yeah, there's kind of two names for the Netherlands, and one of them's not offensive so much, but it is, it's one that kind of implies your lack of knowledge, and it's, it's one that, again, you don't get into trouble with, but you almost kind of do in that case, and that's something you got to keep in mind with the Netherlands. So actually going back to the UK, you also got to keep in mind the UK is a country of country uh, countries. The biggest country is England. It's the most well known of, none of them. And if you call anyone from any of the other four countries, English, so Wales, Scotland, or Northern Ireland, they'll be a little bit offended and just, just watch out for that. That's all I'm saying. So yeah, let's actually move on from England and you know this other part of Europe in general to talk about one of the other parts, which is the former USSR country. So if you refer to them as being basically Russia, you're going to offend a lot of people in particular 
you're going to offend the Baltics. So these three countries right here, Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, one, try and not get to get them confused with each other. It's not so much offensive, but like it's a common mistake. And two, if you call them Russia, it is generally, oh, yeah, if you call them Russia, it's generally offensive to a lot of people there because although there is a relatively high Russian population, they were kind of invaded by the USSR against their will. Their, you know, the occupation was highly illegal and they're really, really upset about it. So don't call them Russia, especially because there is tensions right now between Estonia and Russia because it kind of is the, the gateway to Europe. If you were to invade a, a country by land, it'd be Estonia or Latvia, which is why you gotta keep that in mind. Don't, don't call them Russia because, you know, they're kind of scared of being Russia and you don't want to kind of, uh, you know, bring that fear up. So the next one here actually is, this is such a ridiculous one that, again, even to try and say it is, that basically the Balkans, um, there is a term called Balkanization, which is where you divide a people group against each other to make them kind of fight. It's, uh, it's used to describe a lot of things. But in this particular case, uh, the Balkans, yeah, again, obviously, this is where the term came from. And it's so, so true. There are so many people groups here that actually all descend from roughly the same people. They're, the peoples are very tricky to distinguish. And I thought that wasn't true at first. I thought that was something that like, you know, because so many people disagree with it, but it looks like it is mostly true. And even saying that right now, people are like, no, Bosnians are distinct from Croatians, who are distinct from Serbians, who are distinct from Montenegrins. But again, the people group is largely the same there, but they're widely separated by their religion and by the borders. So yeah, there is, four, uh, again, there's Bosnia, uh, there's Bosnia, there's Croatia, there's Serbia, there's Montenegro. If you get these countries confused with each other, or you, I mean, you could call them Yugoslavia, I doubt they'd be too offended, but if you get the countries confused with each other, it's kind of offensive. And if you get the people groups offended, confused with each other, even though they are largely the same, they're very distinctly different because Bosnians are largely uh, Muslims and Croatians are lar uh, largely, uh, I actually get the other two confused. I think there's like one's Catholic and one is Protestant. That you gotta keep in mind, separate religions makes them separate people groups and don't you dare get that mixed up, like I just did there actually. So with that said, uh, Kosovo is another really hot button, uh, hot button issue. I said in this video, in my video, Two thirds of the countries in the world, or it's just under two thirds of the countries in the world, recognize Kosovo as an independent state, but it's not entirely. And, but some people are like, no, Kosovo is a province. Why do you, oh, I knocked my camera down. <laughs> uh, Kosovo is a province. You will believe it is a province. What the heck, so you can't, why are you, why are you going with this, the, the, the opinion? because Kosovo is one of the hot button issues in the Balkans right now. So Kosovo is an independent country that declared independence unilaterally, uh, unilaterally, unilaterally and used to be part of Serbia. And because Serbia didn't accept their unilateral uh, independence declaration, Serbians have a very, very, very upset view about Kosovo and they don't believe it exists. It's like, you know, you don't, you don't talk about Kosovo because it does not exist. And if you say that it's a country that's highly offensive to everyone else roughly in the region. And if you call, if you say to Kosovoans, they're part of Serbia, just as offensive. Again, to, to even call a country a country is highly offensive. And that's nuts to me, but it's a real thing it will run into right here. And also, uh, the, the Kosovoans, by the way, are mostly Albanian, which is why you might hear some people mix that up. Again, not quite so offensive, but still probably shouldn't make that mistake because if you confuse any of these people around, that's going to be kind of offensive. And actually, a similar thing to that is if you call uh, certain Central European countries, Eastern European, they get kind of offended by that too. So Czechia is the biggest example of this and sometimes Austria too, but not so much them. If you call Czechia an Eastern European country, there's a lot of implications of that that they really don't like and they say, no, Central European, Darn it. And you're not gonna get in like a bar fight and no one's gonna hug you too hard and insist that, you know, bombings are right or anything if you say that, but you probably shouldn't say it anyway. Pro tip, don't call Czechians, uh, you know, Eastern Europeans, because they're Central Europeans. So to get out of Europe actually, because Europe's a fun place with lots of ways to offend people all over the place because of the way the borders are, uh, you know, kind of drawn, the borders being drawn across the world is something that causes wars and division. And you know, in the British Empire video, I said most people are proud of it and there's some cool stuff going on. One of the things that you really can't be so proud of is the way, um, I think it was the British Raj, uh, British India was kind of split up, was it was divided into the largely Hindu majority and the largely uh, Muslim majority. However, because of the way they divide these countries and it wasn't a very even split along the border, there was a lot of upset, uh, long story short, between India and Pakistan. And to this day, I swear to God, every Indian I have ever met hates Pakistanis like, uh, so yeah, again, in the UK, there's like the stereotype people who don't like people from Pakistan, but every Indian like I've been friends with at school, they're like, oh yeah, and then the insert, is the uh, racial slow word here. And if you get these two countries mixed up or anyone from these two countries mixed up, they find it horrifically offensive. Again, they were part of the same country for a while under the British Empire, but uh, India and Pakistan, very, 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 very distinctly separate countries as it so turns out. India, Pakistan is a big country. It's a uh, nuclear power. In fact, yeah, actually, that's how big the war got between them. They're both like sort of nuclear powers that aren't allowed to be. It's not good stuff. But yeah, Pakistan is a pretty large country in its own right, but India is the um, one of the large countries in the world and it's going to have the largest population in the 
world by, you know, I think it's like 2022 or something, in the next like 10, 15, 20 years, and you'll be the most people that live in one country. And it's a big mess, you know, of the borders, of everything going on there. But don't call them Pakistanis, don't call them Bangladeshis, don't call them Chinese. Call them Indians, or call them from their region, because, again, it's such a big country. Uh, some of you will keep in mind. And also, you know, Sri Lanka, try not to mix that one up too, okay? Just just while you're at it, keep that in mind. Uh, this is actually a tiny one to bring up, like, it's not actually too big of a deal. But, like, my grandmother gets a little bit, not offended, but, like, she insists you call it Ceylon and not Sri Lanka, because, again, there was a big change in government from Ceylon, Sri Lanka. And Sri I think Sri Lanka's done some, like, crimes again, not against humanity, but, like, some pretty, you know, egregious uh, you know, crimes there recently. So, yeah, Sri Lanka and Ceylon, if they're from Ceylon, call them call them the, the name of the country they're from, not the name the country is now, because sometimes that's offensive, apparently. So, another one, just while we're here, is uh, Canada and the US. Uh, calling people from the US Canadian doesn't offend too many of them, but calling Canadians American, they're not going to get too offended with you, but it's, it's not a polite thing to do, because Canadians are considered to be nice and upbeat and friendly, and people from the US don't have that same reputation. So, don't, don't mix the US and Canada up. I know they're both white North Americans, but there is... There's, a, there's, a, there's quite a few distinct differences that make uh, Canadians seem to be considered more nice overseas. And that's why I've, I've actually heard this is a real thing. A lot of uh, Americans pretend to be Canadians overseas, just, you know, so people respect them a bit more. And there's something interesting about that to be said. So, yeah, as well as that, we've got a bunch more examples with the South America and the Africa. But the last one I hear all the time is to do with Australia and New Zealand. Again, uh, so it doesn't really, it, it kind of goes one way here. Australia, if you call people from Australia, uh, yeah, Australia, New Zealanders then, you know, that's kind of fine. But if you call people from New Zealand Australians, it's a little bit offensive because they are their own separate country. They were, again, at one point under the British Empire, but they're distinct and they're separate now. And they're not going to, you know, bomb you or do anything like that, again, with the other examples. But you, you probably shouldn't do it anyway, you know? New Zealand, separate country to Australia. And in fact, I think actually it's been proven that, like, New Zealand is almost its own, like, continental shelf right now. That's, like, a thing going into place right now. So there's almost a continent dividing them, sort of, depending on how you count continents. So keep that in mind, you know, separate places, separate capitals, separate people, sort of, they're similar. But yeah, you gotta keep in mind, uh, and there's, they've got separate accents. There's a lot of distinct separa separations between Australia and New Zealand, and you don't, wanna, you don't wanna be making that mistake. It's just not a very good idea. Pro tip right there. So with that said, um, actually, yeah, with that said, I hope you did all enjoy today's uh, video. Going over some of the weird ways you can offend people with just the name of the country. Um, I hope you all enjoy it, because I'm gonna go and I guess play some Breath of the World now because I want I you know I've been making videos all day so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Hope you all had a nice one because I'll see you all next time. Second channel, don't care. Bye.